Hello friends, welcome back to Final Fantasy 7. At the end of the last episode we plunged from a bridge and landed on a train, and now we're in a train. As the Avalanche members. True? I think he was killed. No way! True. Say, do you think Drew's going to stay on and fight for Avalanche? The hell I know! <laughs> if y'all weren't such scrubs! Looks like I'm a little late. You're a damn right you're late. Got Walson in here making a big scene. It's just what I always do. Excellent um, swearing there from Barrett. So, you were worried about me. I'm taking it out of your money, hotshot. They have changed the dialogue a little, actually, from the PlayStation version to this one. Which is going to keep it reasonably fresh for me, but, you know. We get our accolades from the Avalanche members. Ah, uh, Jesse, safety first. Why is your mouth always open? Oh, I see. Last train out of Sector 8 station. Last stop is Sector 7 train graveyard. Expected time of arrival is 12.23 a.m. Midgar Standard Time. Let's talk to the drunk. And then, talk to everyone else. Oh. Didn't mean to quite do that. So we'll look at the monitor showing the rail network around the Midgar. So there are eight reactors, and as she says, they provide Midgar with electricity. Such a clinical way of naming the towns. This is number one. The original line is, anyone can tell we look suspicious, so we're using fake IDs. Look, you can see the surface now. This city don't have no day or night. I've decided Barrett has Barry Burton's voice. If that plate weren't there, we could see the sky. A flowing city! Pretty unsettling scenery! And I have Joe Valentine's voice! <laughs> huh? Never expect to hear that out of someone like you. You just full of surprises, Jill. 
The upper world, a city on a plate, is because of that fucking pizza that people underneath are suffering. And the city below is full of polluted air. On top of that, the reactor keeps draining up all the energy. Then why doesn't everyone move on to the plate? Dunno. Probably because they ain't got no money. Or, maybe, because they love their land. No matter how polluted it gets. I know. No one lives in the slums because they want to. It's like this train. It can't run anywhere except where its rails take it. Okay, definitely not continuing those voices, by the way. He opened that door from 15 feet away. It's quite impressive. So, Avalanche members pour out of the train. Apparently you need to jump off. So we head back to the Avalanche hideout, which is in Sector 7. As Barrett shoots the pub up to empty it. Brief glimpse, there we are, of our next character. Oh, we missed the dialogue there. You're gonna see your baby. So this is Tifa and young Marlene. Did you fight with Barrett? Let's lie. We didn't really fight with Barrett, we just kind of argued with him. So this, as I said, is Tifa. I'm sure she'll appreciate this. Of course, name the character after Becky. Flowers, how nice. You almost never see them here in the slums. Flower for me? <laughs> we'll give it to Becky. I, I do fully expect in the comments um, something from Becky about how I'd never really give her flowers. Uh oh, here comes Barrett. Marlene is Barrett's daughter. But not really. But, you know, we'll get there. You can probably tell from the fact that she's white. And Barrett is, of course, a big black man. But let's not start that. We'll talk to Becky before we go down. Give me something hard. So, being a pub in Sector 7, it of course has the wonderful name, Seventh Heaven. Becky's showing a little concern for us. And we're being a cold-hearted bastard. 
bastard, all the same. Are you feeling alright? Yeah, why? I am a little tired, how did you know? Soldier is basically Shinra's army. Well, it's the upper echelons of Shinra's army. And. Yeah, we fancy ourselves as a bit of a, a badass, all told. Stain of Shinra? You asked me a question and I answered it. That's all. I'm going upstairs. I want to talk about my money. <laughs> money. I don't mind if they change some bits of the game. Like, the dialogue here is a little off. Buddies, do something about it. You're really leaving? You forgot the promise, too. Promise? So you did forget. And here we have some back exposition. Look, the well, which we're somehow standing in front of, despite it being literally halfway around the world. Slight distraction, as my phone tells me there's a software update. I'm getting Android 5.1.1, apparently. Becky in a nice aquamarine dress, matching shoes, and I'm in green shorts with a black jacket. Man, am I cool. I'm not just going to get a job. I want a giant soldier! <laughs> Super rough! Super rough! Sorry. I was, every time Sephiroth mentioned I was going to do that, but. Eh. <laughs> Later on in the game, it might get a little, um. Difficult, <laughs> to say the least. So, this is the aforementioned promise. And Becky would like her hero to come and save her. Who doesn't really fully understand what's going on here, but, you know. Eager to please the lady. 
and a shooting star confirms the promise. I'm not a hero and I'm not famous, so I can't keep our promise. A promise is a promise! Picked up 2,000 gil. 1,500 gil, sorry. The next one, yeah. Then you. <laughs> I'm such a fucking mercenary. And here we have the simplest bartering session of all time. It's done. <laughs> no idea if the offer was uh, taken or not, but you know. Done. That's it. We wake up back in the basement. We'll use the pinball table elevator. And leave Marlene to tend the bar. Because... That's what children do, right? Let's walk away from that. <clears throat> You're in my way, Barrett. And Barrett would like to know how to use materia. You wouldn't understand. Now I'm in charge of materia. So we can unequip some materia. We have a sleepy storekeeper. Are, are you a customer? Yes, welcome. We sell. We buy. Well, I'm going to sell you Time to sell it Aether. Maybe not. We will buy some material from you though. One fire and one pure. And then we will head to the weapon shop. Wait a minute, you! You can't just walk out of here without buying something! Might be unhealthy for you, if you know what I mean! Fine! I'll take three iron bangles, and four grenades. And then I'll put the iron bangles. Ah. Okay, I've worked out one of the buttons for... I will, um, have a rearrange of the <laughs> controls, I think, before the next video. So we can then sell our bronze bangles. And head upstairs. We'll take the all materia. Hey, you got one right off! That was materia. Now, take this treasure chest. Which landed on our foot, quite frankly. And we get another ether. Now, this is the training hall. With a save point, and if you talk to everyone in there, they give you various tutorials. We don't need to do that. Upstairs is an inn, but we don't need to worry about that either.
so that's pretty much it for Sector 7. Nothing else of note. To the north here is an entrance to the tower. But we don't need to worry about that, and we can't go south. I don't entirely understand that dialogue, but there you go. So I'm going to end this video here. And in the next video, we're going to try and take on Mako Reactor number 5. Mako number 5! And all that. I will not be singing Lou Vega in the next video. You can rest assured of that. Well, thanks for watching, friends. I'll see you in the next episode of Final Fantasy VII. Let me know if you're enjoying the series. Um, if some of you are, if some of you aren't, I'm, I'll probably keep it going. If everyone's enjoying it, then hell. Excellent. And if none of you are enjoying it, well, then I'll just play it for myself and I won't bother recording it. But, till next time, I'll see you guys. Bye for now.